Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Sam Forbes. I have autism and an intellectual disability, and I don't mind talking about it. You know, I hear a lot of negative messages out there in the world. Maybe you have heard them too. Lots of anger and lots of judgment. Lots of this negativity gets directed at people like me. Some people think that I can't do stuff, like I could never have a job, that I could never go to school, work, or that I could even contribute to society. Hearing and seeing this makes me sad and a little angry. <laughs> and you know what? For a while, part of me believed them. I was worried that I wouldn't be able to get a job or be able to go places by myself or to be independent. Then, one day, my whole life changed. I got a job. I was hired at Starbucks. <laughs> the manager at Starbucks, Chris, took a risk on me. He showed an act of inclusion by offering me a job, and he and the whole team have taken the time to understand me better. And when I, <laughs> when I need extra help, Chris and the whole, the whole gang at Starbucks is there for me. We all work together. I'm a part of the team. One of the things that we learned together is that dancing helps me focus. And when I focus, I do a better job. So it's always a dance party at my Starbucks. Jim, living it up here. <laughs> getting, that <clears throat> excuse me, getting that job at Starbucks was really important to me because it showed me what I could do. It showed, it showed me what it means to take a chance on someone who is different. I like seeing that, someone who is different, because it shows that someone isn't worse or better. They are just different, and that's okay. It's important to me that when you look at someone, you see their humanity rather than a label. When people see my humanity and love and accept me for who I am, it makes my life better. At Starbucks, many customers would come in and dance along with me, and my team would too. One day, someone took a video, a fun video of me dancing and posted it on social media. Carly Fleischman, who is a famous woman with autism, grabbed it and posted it to her social media, and it went viral. I became known as the dancing barista around the world. I was on the Ellen DeGeneres show, and you can Google some of the other many great things that I've done. <laughs> Thank you. The most important thing about all of that is that people started to notice that someone with autism could work in a place they go to every day. People would send me notes and come to my store and smile and wave and even take the occasional selfie with me. The traffic in my Starbucks went way up. So I guess I was good for business, huh, Chris? Yeah. <laughs> um, I, just, I decided that I wanted to use some of my fame to get the message out there about hiring and accepting people with disabilities into the community and workplace more. I do a lot of public speaking. I've been a guest judge at a talent shows. I've been a keynote speaker. I've even met with an official de de delegation from Japan to hear about employment for people with disabilities. It's an important message. And something else that is important is that I get paid to do it. <laughs> Some of my advocacy work I do on my own. But some of it I do as part of my job at Community Living Toronto as a public relations and fundraising ambassador. I still work at Starbucks, and I'm on the Speaker's Bureau for the United Way of Greater Toronto, and I still work at Community Living Toronto, and I started college in September, and I love it. It's a wild and busy life for me, but I love it all. <laughs> I, I love that I have options, and I'm learning new skills that I need to be really successful. I'm really excited about my future. Sorry. Inclusion is always better than exclusion. Inclusion makes your world bigger. Exclusion makes your world smaller. Inclusion shares love and hope and makes your life richer. If you think you can be more inclusive in your life, you are right. 
So I challenge you to learn more, hang out more, and take a chance on people who are different from you. And you don't need to be afraid of anyone who is different for any reason, whether they have a disability, or they are people of color, or they are indigenous or LGBTQ. Don't be afraid and don't miss out. Take a chance and take a risk. Today my life is better because people included me. And your life is better because people have included you too. People with disabilities have a lot to teach you. And if you include us more, your life will be so much more beautiful because you did. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Sam. Thank you, Sam. It's great job. I wish we had a dance party going for you right now. I'm sorry we don't, everybody. There's no music in the background here. Uh, over to Chris. Okay. Well, my story is not as nice as Sam, but uh, nor do I have as many speaking engagements as Sam. <laughs> Um, but here we go. So thank you for allowing me to speak today. Um, so my story really starts back as a teenager like Sam uh, when I started at Starbucks as well. Um, and that's how I could really relate to Sam, you know, when I first started at the company. Um, eventually I worked my way up to store manager. Um, I've been a store manager for about nine years or so. I've done various roles within Starbucks, worked in our head office, been a training manager, support other managers in terms of training for now uh, because of all the stuff that's happened with uh, persons with disabilities and so on. So uh, this has springboarded us into a lot of extracurricular things on the side as well, So which has been amazing. Um, but two of my passions I've developed over the years have been community involvement and training and development. Um, at Starbucks, as a district, we participate in a lot of community events, if it's fundraising, if it's um, spending a bit of our time. Um, and that's something that I really, really uh, resonated with me, and um, I thought that was something that, was maybe something that I was missing in life. Um, so, skip forward a bit, um, how I met Sam. Uh, there was a camp called Camp Thrive um, back in August uh, 2015. Um, and I remember uh, I was teaching, um, we, were d we went there to teach uh, job skills for the kids, and um, my specific uh, workshop was a coffee tasting. Um, a coffee tasting at Starbucks is about uh, talking about the quality and the conversation connections behind um, the coffee itself. But um, I remember when I first met Sam, um, he stood out to me immediately, and not just because he's like six inches taller than me, <laughs> But uh, he, <laughs> Sam had this, um, you know, curiousness to him and genuineness to him that, um, that kind of like draws you into him. Um, through our conversations, um, we immediately became good friends at that moment. And I remember throughout the whole day, we'd interact with each other, come back to each other. Um, so skip forward to the end of the day. Um, I remember being um, reflecting, and I was just like. This was kind of an amazing experience that a group of us managers got to spend, but um, how could we do more? It felt uh, good, but you know, doing something just for a day, for an afternoon, it doesn't feel like, yes, you're making a difference for that day, but how can we make it go on and on and on and continue that feeling? Um, so I asked my district manager, uh, what, could, what could we possibly do? Would it be way out there in left field if I potentially hired someone? Um, she said, yes, we could do that. And it's not like Starbucks hasn't had maybe someone with disabilities before, but it was new to our district, it was new to our area. Um, but I think one of the things when I did talk to Sam was, what stood out to him was, he always wanted to be treated as an equal. We have a position at Starbucks that's called the cafe attendant. It more focuses on maybe just the general cleaning tasks. What I wanted to do is bring Sam on as an equal. To me, to everyone else, he would do the exact same task. He held be held accountable just like everyone else. Because if you ever hear Sam speak, the one thing he always says, he wants equality. So, um, and that's kind of where we went. So Sam was hired, and I remember um, we approached uh, Sean and Cindy, and um, some of his therapists at the time, and we we kind of said this was kind of the idea. Um, and then I remember everybody was like excited, and I remember the first day at my store at Young and Finch, Sam came in, and he thought he was coming for, do you remember that? Yeah. He, he thought you were coming for a job interview, but he was really coming for, he was gonna be hired. Um, your friends, your family were there, and it was such kind of a momentous occasion. Um, and then I remember the moment we told you, and then you just 
broke down crying and it was <laughs> he does that a lot but <laughs> so, um but uh, there was something that i wrote down here that i re really stood out to me um was um i remember talking to sam's parents and cindy i guess this is to you i remember the moment you came up to me and you hugged me and you said uh you've changed sam's life and i would say that didn't really like it meant something to me but i didn't really know the real meaning till we spent more time together i learned about your family sam's upbringing his the the struggle that you've went through as parents and um other parents did and then all the time i spent with uh the other families that were had kids with autism and this was so new to me it's something that i've never experienced and um yeah it touched me so it was amazing just to kind of see where we started to where we are now. Um, knowing Sam for now three years, it's, it's been a wild ride. I, um, where am I now? So through the connections with Sam's, um, okay, so Sam has been a real contributor to our team and the trainer. Um, I think for Sam, he's been more sociable and com uh, uh, confident mm -hmm. since he started working at Starbucks. I know that was one of the things that mm -hmm. he had trouble with if it was just looking people in the eye, and I think that was something that we focused on. Um, I think for me, it's, it's helped me become more patient, um, empathetic in my training, um, just really focusing on the end process, and it doesn't matter how long it takes. Um, and then looking at that anybody is possible to do any job, and I think it's the same thing with Sam. Um, he might take it a little bit longer to get there, but he will get there, and with the help, just like anybody else, I think that's kind of something that we all have to look towards. Um, so a video was made, and probably seen the first video, Sam was dancing, making a peppermint mocha. Um, a lot of hard work came through that with Sam, and you know, people don't see the hours and the, the time that it took um, for maybe something to come together, like a 30 second video. Um, and then I, I mean, even Cindy, when we used to talk about like, uh, when Sam used to tie a garbage bag, and uh, the things that we take for granted that Sam worked so hard to, yeah. to when he went home, practice with the bags, um, and that was amazing to, for me to see that, you know, Sam's really working so hard, not just in front of me, but on, in the background, just to do those simple tasks. Um, so I'd say that video went viral, like Sam talked yeah. about, uh, with Carly Fleischman getting it out there, and then, I mean, that was kind of history, and then the Ellen video came out, and that's kind of brings us to where we are now. Yeah, no problem. Dang. Thank you, guys. I, I think um, everyone in the room would probably agree with me when I say that uh, yours is a pretty inspirational story, both of you. Um, both of friendship, kind of spontaneous friendship uh, and social integration, but also getting a job, right? And, and making, making a go of it in the workforce. So my first question though, and then I'll turn it over to, to the crowd for some questions, but just a couple from me first. Um, first to you, Sam. So from what I've seen in, in the media coverage the, and in prepping for this, you told some reporters that it was your dream to be a barista. Can you uh, explain a little bit why you were so drawn to, to coffee and being a barista in general? Uh, um, so like originally when I was like younger, when I would go into like Starbucks's and I would like see the people behind the counter, I would be like, well, that looks like such a, it looks like such a great work environment and it looks like such a, welcoming place in such a inclusive place and i was i just kept thinking that um i mean i would say i'm more of like a frappuccino tea person more than a coffee person i mean i like coffee but like i just prefer frappuccinos and tea to coffee actually but i really think i think like there was just something so interesting to me that that a barista like that a barista would do, you know, mm -hmm. like it, um, like the stuff that they do and the work that they put into making a drink and like the and like their hard work at like cleaning up the place and like 
I think their general hardworkingness made me really want to become a barista because I, for one, am a really big fan of Starbucks. I was even a big fan of it way before all this stuff happened. And like, and it is a big thing for my generation. Like, a lot of people from my generation really love Starbucks. But um, I think it really was just the work ethic that really drew me to being a barista. Like, I really, truly think it was the work ethic that, that kind of drew me to wanting to be a barista, and obviously this guy, too. So it was like a big, it was a big, there were a lot of perks. Yeah. So, yeah. So I can, I can feel your passion from here um, for, how, for how, how great you feel about being a barista. So I have to ask, what was it like to have your dream met? Right to achieve that so so spontaneously and so so quickly. Um, I would say it was like a dream. I really I really didn't think like when I first got the job, I didn't think it was actually happening. Like I thought I was in some sort of like fairy tale land because I I didn't think that this would ever actually happen to me ever. Like I thought because of my autism, I would never be able to get employed. And I, have, I unfortunately had that mindset for so many years because people kept telling me that, oh, because I have autism, I won't be able to work. Well, I, I friggin' proved them wrong because, because I want to tell employers and people who may or may not have as much experience with people on the spectrum, I want to tell them that you should be kind, you should be patient, and you should be caring to the individual. I mean, not treat them any differently, but just be patient with them because they might have a slower time learning things. I mean, it's different with everyone with autism, but it's like... It's, it, it, was, it was really easy with me. I mean, it was hard, harder for me in the beginning. Yeah. I will say that it was very hard for me in the beginning because I, I didn't know Chris that well and it was, I'm a very shy person. But like, once you get to know me, I'm very like bubbly and like, I like to talk a lot, clearly. <laughs> and um, yeah, so I think just, Knowing that my dream came true, just it really made my day. And it really, 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 I really value that someone took a chance on me and that someone in the greater society, because I had a negative view on society for so many years. I thought that they didn't treat people with disabilities correctly, and we still have a long ways to go, but, but like, I'm, I'm just really grateful, like extremely, extremely grateful for this entire experience. And yeah, I think, it's, I think it's great. great. Thank you. Though you say that um, you were nervous at first, right? Uh, and I, that's a good segue actually to my, to my first question for Chris. On the employer side, were you kind of nervous or, or trepidatious or unsure? At first, when uh, when you offered Sam the job and he showed up the, the first day of work, um, definitely. Um, I, I like what I said before. That's, uh, there was no training. There was no plan that we follow. I look at the plan that we had, but you know, it doesn't have that variable of a person with autism. That was um, up for me to learn. And working with Starbucks, working with um, you know Sam's parents, Sam's therapist at the time, it was. Okay, I could have an idea what I think is right, but I don't really know. And I'll, I'll, I'll use like something so simple as, Sam, like, so at Starbucks, we have 15 minute breaks. And uh, we well, get longer breaks, depending if you work more. <laughs> but um, Sam would always come back from his break late, but he always wear a watch. And I just assumed that he knew how to tell time. So the things that I took for granted of, I had to like, scale myself back and not just assume things, but really confirm every single thing and then let Sam teach it back to me before I went back to the next step. So it really did help the way I thought differently than how I used myself in terms of training and how I train people I go forward now. Um, you know, Sam talked about people with differences, but 
regardless of disability or not, everyone has differences. Everyone learns a different way. So um, I think f as for employers, we need to look at that in terms of how can we encompass maybe a, a broader training plan mm -hmm. to encompass all different walks of life, right? Mm -hmm. So now that you guys have sort of been, you've been friends for so long and you've yeah. worked together for so long, yeah. if you were kind of talking to your past selves uh, back at the camp, um, but go, you were about to go through this all over again, what would you have done differently with the knowledge that you guys have now? Maybe you first, Sam? Yeah. Uh, um, I guess I would say to the person that went to this camp that he did not want to go to, Really, truly, and all in all, did wow. not want to go to. That's I did a hint not want and to dad, go to I a think, place where then. my parents were not. <laughs> I mean, I had, I had done that before, but I had not been away from them for so long. Like, it was a three-week camp. And really, like, the only motivation for me going was, A, finding out that Howard DeLal was the therapist for Carly Fleischman, the famous autism advocate, and B, meaning my best friend for life, Nina. And I would say to my past self, don't be so scared. Like, don't, don't be so scared of what's to come and push yourself more and try new things more and just be like willing to do more and more and more things that kind of get you gradually out of your comfort zone. I think that's, that's very inspirational advice for everybody, I think. <laughs> Thank you, Sam. <laughs> How about you, Chris? Unlike Sam, I did want to go. So, <laughs> uh -huh. so uh, I mean, I would tell myself that just to continue the same thing that you did with the open mind, um, I guess, um, lead with your heart in terms of those types of things, things that feel right are probably right. Um, and I guess throughout the process, I would have said more, what, what could you have done differently, make a bigger impact? I think for us, for me, myself, I was learning as I went along. So if I would have maybe attached myself more in terms of like training, learning, uh, more programs, uh, which I'm trying to do more now, I would say, but like reflecting what could I have did more in the moment for my personal growth. Because um, it, it was pretty much more about how can we do this for Sam? And I think maybe I could have did more on my side, but yeah. Any, um, any advice that, that either of you would give to employers that are kind of scratching their heads about how they can do better and how they can make that first step? Um, I, would, I would say that the employer definitely needs to have an open mind and the employer needs to be patient and the employer needs to, like, I mean, I get that it's hard sometimes, but the employer needs to implement a plan that caters to the person with autism, especially if they're the, if, especially if it's the type of autism where they process things a little more slowly like I do. So I would just, I would mainly say just keep, keep an open mind. Um, I would say s a lot of the similar things, but I would say really focusing on training and development, um, creating, if it's more visual training, more training for different types of people, because all, we're all different types of learners. Um, not just, uh, you know, you see it, you read it, you practice it. It's, there's so much more into it. Um, looking at their, like, wellingness programs and um, job opportunity programs for youth, um, seeing what they could do more into the community. Um, that's what we did at Starbucks in terms of getting a group of people out there, um, but not just saying it and doing it and making it part of their business model and not just because it's something to focus on this month or whatnot, it's in their mission statement, it's in their company views. Well, and so you, you both have been out telling your stories for, for a while now. Mm -hmm. um, what kinds of responses do you get both from uh, potential from people with disabilities looking for jobs, but also from employers uh, as you go in and tell your stories? Uh, um, from what? Sorry. <laughs> so as you go, so it's a good question. So as you go out and tell your story to people, particularly, I guess, when you tell people with disabilities about your experience, um, what kind of response do you get back? I most, I most, 
the majority of other responses I get are positive. Like some some people are like, Chris's and your story inspired me so much that I want to get a job maybe at Starbucks or at Sephora or something like that. And like, like I just think, um, like, and I'm so glad that it had this positive impact and like for for both of us I think it definitely was a life changing experience. Definitely. And um I would say that it's a lot of like positivity, like positive vibes and like just even parents being a little more inspired to get their child out into the workforce. Yeah, definitely. What about from employers? What do you guys hear from employers? Um, well, I've had people ask us, call me and ask me if it's to speak or if it's to give advice. Um, and they're looking at how can they implement something into their workforce or their training and programs. Um, I know within Starbucks, like we've really put more of an emphasis hiring job um, opportunity youth. Um, and if it's like, like opening different stores that cater to different people, there's stores in the U.S. that are fully employed by uh, deaf persons, um, sign language, things of that nature. So there is stuff happening, but it's, you know, how can we make it happen faster and how can we make it more inclusive? Um, you know, I don't know the answers to everything, and I think it's just if people with the same... Um, like minds as us are going to try to do this and open it up for everyone. I think that's just a start. Yeah. So I think now I'll ask the question that we're all really here to, to get the answer to, which is um, tell us about Ellen and meeting Ellen. What was, what was that like yeah. going on the show? Um, truly, like, I mean, because when you watch it, you really don't think that you're... Like, you watch it and you're like, you wish. You wish that you would get on that show and be able to interact with this beautiful angel of a human being. <laughs> and I can say that now because I actually know her and I know that she's a kind-hearted woman. And, like, you always wish that you could, like, get on. Like, I, I bet I'm not the only one who's wished <laughs> to get on who wants the to go Ellen. on Ellen? Let's get a, a show. show of hands. Sit on the Not couch. as many as I would have thought, actually, but okay. But, like, when they first initially Skyped us, I was like, okay, like, this cannot be real. Like, is this a prank? Like, what's happening? Like, what's going on? And then it really, like, truly sunk in that it was a genuine producer of The Ellen Show. And then I started like freaking out. I was like, oh my gosh, like this is so, f this is crazy. This is so crazy. Like I never thought I would ever, ever in a million years, like this is a once in a lifetime thing. Like I never thought that it would ever happen to me of all people. And I wasn't as, I wasn't crazy nervous. Like I was just more like excited and like giddy because like I was, meeting Ellen, who I had seen on TV for like years and years and years, and who, have always, who've, who I personally have thought is one of like the more genuine people in Hollywood, in my opinion. And um, it was just such a thrilling, thrilling experience, like being in like the back room and like, like having her like people like take us places was like, you really did feel like you were a celebrity for a day, and it was actually kind of fun. Because you are, Sam. You are a celebrity. Really fun. Personally. I would say I was excited, too. I think it's very surreal just to sit on that iconic couch. Um, but, yeah, the whole experience, being with the other guests and uh, people that you watch maybe on TV or in movies was kind of cool. But it, like Sam said, Ellen was super gener uh, sorry, super genuine, um, and she did hug a lot, so that <laughs> yeah. was that was cool. Um, and then just being able to spend uh, with my family came, and then Sam's family, and it was kind of like we became one family, and it was it was really fun. That's so awesome. 
And you guys got a couple of other cool experiences out of it too, right? Like trip to Japan for Sam, and you guys did a <laughs> great day with the with the Raptors, yeah. right? Yeah, we did. Yeah. That that was insane. Like, <laughs> like truly, truthfully, I like. I mean, I knew in general because I've I've watched Ellen over the years, and I know that she gives her. I guess I guess you could say guests gifts. And if they're like, if it's one of those like life changing stories, they like give them like a hundred dollar check or something for like, so, so, like they give it so, like, something like that. And I thought it was just going to be like some swag or like some, or like some, like Ellen book or like Ellen hat or something <laughs> because, or like just an apparel item. I truly in a million years didn't think I would be getting a ticket to one of my all-time favorite countries. I mean, truly, like, Japan is one of my favorite countries of all time. Like, I'm just interested in the culture and the food and the people and the costume. Like, Japan and Asian things have always, like, interested me and for so long. Awesome. That's, that's fantastic. Uh, that's it. I have questions from me. How about some questions from the audience? We've got some mics here and maybe somebody to help with. Yep. Get you a mic. One second. Um, my name is Felicia. I'm from Corbrook. I'm an employment specialist. Uh, and my question is um, basically a two-part question. So um, Chris and, and Sam, um, when you guys met, um, obviously you're talking about your experiences and how you're feeling about working and working with. Um, so as an employment specialist, my job is basically to network and job develop. And I'd love to know what should be or what is the most successful approach um, for one as an employer for someone to come to you and say I have someone who's really interested in working for your company versus someone who I'm working with as a client who is living with a disability and wants to work in an environment what would I, what would you give as advice as an approach to talk about hiring someone or being hired so two-part question for both of you okay. <laughs> So I would say uh, that actually happens to me quite frequently. Someone will bring someone to me or a group of people and like um, um, one of the other people who work with you come to me a lot and, and we're working on um, placing people as well. But I would say just like for at Starbucks, we have people in place who are in charge of hiring and HR and that, but we also have people within our districts of stores who have lead roles in terms of bringing in new talent. Um, I would say maybe finally, like looking within the company and see who are those specialists in terms of that and s setting up uh, sitting times, like one-on-one -on -one times and then trying to talk about what the benefit could be for a specific employer and vice versa. Um, and then maybe within the company they have like groups that are potentially there. Um, in Canada at Starbucks we don't have that certain group but I know in the US they had a group yeah. that was advocates for persons with disabilities and so we were, I had frequent conversations with them and they talked about how they were advocates of bringing in people um, who were looking for jobs. So they might have a specific uh, group within that company. How about you, Sam? A different approach to on the employee side as well, is that? I sometimes will advocate, and so for, as an, as someone living with a disability, I am I am I'm not. So I just want to make sure how can I uh, advocate in a way, or what's my appro what should my approach be to help um, with someone finding employment? Again, I, I come from a staffing background, so uh, working with people with disabilities, I've been focusing on my. Uh, What's the word? I'm not tolerance, but my openness and my opening my eyes to what types of disabilities and what people are able to do. So I just want to know from Chris's perspective, uh, sorry, uh, Sam's perspective, how should that as an, as my approach, or, or even the counselors that you work with, maybe at the camp who helped you in that way. I, c I could add something to that too, because I would say even for myself, when somebody brings a, a person to me, it's just like Sam. I would say is higher functioning, mm -hmm. and then. So for somebody like me who maybe three years ago doesn't know what that means. So it's if it's having profiles or what, what are their skill sets or whatnot. Um, 
I recently been talking to someone from LinkedIn and we're working on ideas on how to like create profiles and things of that nature that would be, cause we're all a tech age now. So yeah. how can, you know, everybody get involved in that way for employers to go looking specifically for people. Um, so there's, yeah, there's a lot of ideas that potentially we could talk about. Sam, you wanna go? Um, <coughs> excuse me. Um, I think maybe from like, an employee point of view. Sorry, <laughs> um, my mind is sort like, of how. What do you think uh, from a counselor perspective? Like, what could somebody advocating on your behalf? You mean like an employer? Yeah. Um. I guess. Um. I guess. I guess. Like. Um. Have 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 similar have a similar mindset as Chris and have a similar aesthetic to approaching a situation that deals with autism or any type of disability. It doesn't have to be just autism, but like just kind of having the same kind of like mentality as Chris would be definitely beneficial for a lot of employees, and I think more employees should be, should have his mindset, in my opinion. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Uh, any other questions from the crowd? Uh, okay. Yes, sir, at the back. Oh, go ahead, Carla. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> well, we'll get to you in a sec, yeah. sir. Sorry, I thought I was the only one left. And <laughs> I, I'm Sam's mom. This is Sam's dad. And th this is one of the few times in the last few years that we've actually seen Sam and Chris together. And so I just wanted to, to thank Chris again publicly for redefining the employee-employer relationship. I don't know any other employees who hug their boss goodbye after every yeah. shift. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, we're, not just, we're not just employees, we're really good friends. Too. Yes, yes. And I think that that's a challenging thing for all employers, and I think it's also true, having been an employer myself, that people will leave jobs not necessarily because they don't like the work, but because they don't like the people that they're working with, and oftentimes that's the boss. And so I think, Chris, you know that you have an employee for life <laughs> sitting beside you. And Sean and I just want to say thank you again for changing all our lives. <laughs> yeah. Excuse me. So my question is um, to Chris. Um, did you have a sort of, sort of like a, a policy within Starbucks, like some kind of guideline um, in terms of, and even a culture around hiring people with disability? If yes, what was that like? And if no, um, what has it been like since you um, employed Sam? Sam. Yeah, employed Sam. Yeah. yeah. Um, I would say Starbucks culture has always been, I mean, if you look at our mission statement, it really focuses on inclusiveness. Um, if it's for, you know, religion, race, sexual orientation, disabilities, whatnot. Um, but I would say since from our story came out, um, a lot of stuff within Starbucks has changed in terms of, like I said before, opening new stores, focusing on different disabilities. Um, I would say the biggest thing I'd like to see change is the training and development piece. Yeah. Um, and But we are actively s seeking persons with disabilities and anyone with different walks of life, I would say. Mm -hmm. um, if it's job opportunity, youth, refugees, whatnot, um, I would say, yeah. Thank you very much, guys. Much appreciated. Thank you, everyone, for coming. Thanks, guys. Thank you, everybody. Yeah.